What's up, BZ Dynasty? This is your boy, the man, the myth, and the legend. Your favorite is right, your dreaded hero, the man, the myth, the legend, Mr. JB Zone. Love y'all. Welcome back to the channel, everybody. So this video, y'all, I'm going to try out something a little bit different. I'm going to do a lot of this of the video uh, screen recording. I want to go into the DNA portion of us being Israelites. We have Deuteronomy 28, verses 15 through 68, the curses. We got Joel 3 about the um, Israelites being sold to the Grecians. Uh, we have Christ in Luke chapter 21 talking about how uh, the land of Israel will be trodden down by the Gentiles until the times of the Gentiles being fulfilled. So that means anybody in that land right now until Christ's second advent should not be the actual people of the land. We have the second prime minister, Gamal Abdul Nasser, saying they left black and they came back white. It's so many different references. The, script, the scriptures paint the Israelite people as a black people. Um, as far as Genesis, talking about the, the rivers surrounding the land of Ethiopia, it's just too much Bible. So, But I did want to start a new series looking at the science behind it. Can we prove, right, that we as African Americans, descendants of the transatlantic, the diaspora, can we prove that the tribes in Africa that we came from are Israelites? Right, so I, I seen a lot of uh, YouTubers, a lot of Israelites doing um, My True Ancestry, uh, 23 Me, Jed Match, all these good things, right? So I just want to kind of take you guys into my results. Um, I'm going. So this is going to be a series, y'all, because it's going to take a little minute for me to really get all of this stuff out that I really want to go over. Now, I got some oral tradition up. Um, so this is going to be kind of DNA and it's going to be oral tradition. And, and what we're trying to do is we're trying to prove if the science backs the scriptures, the prophecies and the oral tradition. Like when you look at the oral tradition of our ancestors, it's an amazing thing how our ancestors are guiding us on this thing. y'all. Now, I know people Israelites might not really go into that, explaining that. And a lot of you guys may already know that. There's power in giving back to the thing that gave you life, right? When you honor the memory of your dad, your granddad, your grandmother, your grandfather, and you dig into, it's almost like they meet you. <laughs> it's almost like they can communicate with you from beyond the grave when you begin to honor their legacy, honor what they stood for, and honor what they said about themselves, and you guard that history. So now, as you can see up here, um, on Nary Land, you can find this oral tradition anywhere about the Yoruba people. And just to kind of give you guys a bag background, um, this is just a copy of my son's. I made one for my son. Now, this is the results that I did, right? You guys already seen that video. If you haven't seen that video, check that out with my uh, African ancestry results. But this is my son, Elijah Ardier. Hebrew, my God is Yah, Lion of, of Yah, Jaslan, Land of Jesse from my mother she named me my middle name that just pass it on son of zion right this is his official name i take great pride in this awakening is beautiful y'all isaiah prophesized that israel would change would subscribe you know their surnames back unto the most high so i just got another certificate that i keep in the family see for with his information yoruba people living in nigeria this is my patrick clan results right so when you start digging into the Iberian Jews, right, when you start looking into the Yoruba's oral tradition, you run into Iberian Jews, right? Iberia is just Spanish or Al-Andalus, right? So now if you look at the Jewish encyclopedia, go, I think this is it. Okay. So this is in the Jewish encyclopedia, right? So just in case you guys think that I'm saying something that's, oh, you're making their oral tradition up of the Yoruba people. Now the, now the Jewish encyclopedia says in Nigeria... The Igbo may be descended from southern and western migrations of ancient Shemitic peoples. I'm going to skim down a little bit. There are three groups. Beni Gad, said to have descended from the tribe of Gad, eighth son of Jacob. Beni Zebulun. Um, so now this is the white Ashkenazi Jews encyclopedia, right? Beni Zebulun. Beni Manasseh. The Beni Ephraim are different from other Nigerian Jewish groups as they live among the Yoruba. So that's source number one. Right. The scripture says where two or three are gathered, let everything be established. Right. So that's the Jewish encyclopedia saying that the Yoruba are said to be Ephraimites or at least a group of them. They ain't going to give you the whole thing flat out. This is the or tradition of the Yoruba themselves. I'm going to read it a little bit. The Benai Ephraim, children of Ephraim from Nigeria, live among the Yoruba nationalities. Now, Yoruba is, is the 
top three or one of the top three ethnic groups found in Nigeria. Most African Americans either are Yoruba, Igbo, or uh, maybe another Ashanti or West African group. But most African Americans are from Nigeria if they did their DNA, and it's going to be Igbo or Yoruba. Uh, their old history tells that the Benai Ephraim people came from Morocco. Y'all pay attention to Morocco. Morocco is going to be crucial. After the Jews were banished from the Iberian Peninsula in 1492 or sometime after. Um, they speak a Moroccan Arabic or uh, I think it's Darji or Deniji. It's a specific dialect um, of Arabic that's uh, known for Morocco, Moroccan people speaking. Yoruba and Aramaic, which is Hebrew. They are known by the Yoruba people as Imo Yokwaim or strange people. Now it goes into these Moorish refuge, uh, refugees not being confused about coming to that area of Nigeria um, because the origin, as we'll go into, of the Yoruba by anthropology uh, from by Derek Lang also believes that the Yoruba people origin or their origin is coming from Israel. So, but not to go too deep, I just wanted to kind of show a little old tradition. Um, I got a tab up here that goes into families having said that are descendants from King David to have settled in Morocco. I'm going to read it a little bit. Um, as it seems, several other families later branched out from them, such as the Don Yaya's, the Abarbanels, who also never ceased to trace their origin to King David. Those related to al Dahdi are the David family. We find after the expulsion of the Jews from Spain, we find them in Morocco. So uh, this is uh, a Jewish organization, uh, Davidic dynasty, where they're talking about these Jews um, showing up in Morocco. So you've got the Jewish encyclopedia that talks about the Yoruba. you got the Yoruba themselves that say they came from Morocco when the Jews were banished from Portugal and Spain. So I'm going to show you a little bit about DNA. So this is going to be a little DNA journey to see can we prove the oral tradition of our ancestors, of the Nigerians that, that bolster this claim that they're Israelites, that they migrated to Nigeria, right? So now I'm going to go into my paternal haplo group, y'all. So as you can see, Brandon Benzion, paternal haplo group. E Z sixteen oh fifty two and y'all don't get lost in the sauce like I, I I did my DNA earlier and it was a different nomenclature it was E L four eighty five and I heard people saying um, and from the honorable Doctor um, Yehoshua Benai Ephraim uh, my brother um, who founded a lot of the study of E one B one A and its correlation to us as African Americans and E one B one A being the holy haplotype so shout out to Doctor Ephraim. Um, so after watching his videos years ago, I said, let me do my DNA to see if I'm E1B1A. And because um, a lot of Israelites were saying that that's linked, that's the African-American haplogroup, which means it's the Israelite haplogroup because of Deuteronomy 28. So when I first got on here, it said EL45. They changed the nomenclature after I asked them to change it to E1B1A. They, they made it more confusing. e z 16052 So you can just go to isogg.org. So I have it pulled up. I'm going to go back to mine. E-Z 16052. ISO GG. Um, e, which it would be haplogroup E, subgroup Z 16052. The official nomenclature, as you can see, is E1B1A. That's the that's all I was looking for, y'all. I was like, I just need to know. And you can Google EL45 or EP252, and they'll tell you that it's E1B1A, 7A, and that kind of thing. But I just use ISOGG because you can pretty much search anything that 23andMe will tell you. So, okay, you see that I'm E1B1A. Um, I did my African ancestry. I showed y'all the certificate and pulled it back up. Yoruba people. So that it proved, uh, I mean, your paternal haplogroup group can't be Yoruba. They would have told me I was European anyway. So, I mean, I'm just extra clarifying it for myself because I want to know for sure. So, now let's go to Jed Match a little bit. Now, Jed Match... Uh, has a way of comparing your DNA with other people groups and after that we're gonna go to my true ancestry that compares your DNA to other people groups across different time periods or archaeology or ancient DNA right so now let's look at Jed match now if you have Jed match all you can do is free you can just start a Jed match account and you can upload like your 23 of me 
And if y'all want me to do a video on that, it's a lot of great videos on that by other Israelites that kind of go in that detail. And I can do one as well just to kind of help you guys if you're having problems. But I took my 23 of me and uploaded it to GMatch. All right. So there's a way that you can go in here and compare or do an admixture test, right? That will let you compare your DNA, like I said, using different different tests they call it i guess it kind of shows you based on each one of your chromosomes one through 20 on each chromosome what different people groups you have a match with based on your dna on each chromosome and as you can see on the right hand column you see moroccan jews moroccan jews moroccan jews north african jews north african jews north african jews right and some of you be like well you see north africa too yeah because uh, if the Jewish people were making the argument that they migrated right from North Africa to Nigeria and West Africa, you're going to have Morocco and you're going to have Moroccan Jews. You're going to have North Africa. And you're going to have North African Jews. Now, during the time of um, the 1300s to 1400s, these people were in places like Italy and France. Right. Before these different Jews were banished at different periods from these regions. Now, there's a lot of history in it, y'all. But this, I just found it interesting that, man, just like a lot of other Israelites were saying, I got Morocco Jews and, and, and this stuff in my DNA, which I thought was, was amazing. I'll praise the most. High. The next part, I did another test. This is Ethio Helix. And as you can see, you see Yoruba, you see Igbo, the Brom people, uh, House of Fulani people, right? And you also see Morocco, Algeria, Libya. Now, what is North African groups? What 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 is North African uh, genetics doing in African American DNA? See, they've told us for the longest time that okay, West Africa Negroes they're different. You know, we're not North African. We're we're, we're just West African, and they don't have any history like you know Egypt is in North Africa, and all of that is different from black people in sub-saharan africa right but when you look at dna it would appear as if our dna is linked to north african people that at one point we were the same people which would suggest that at some point north african people migrated into west africa now you guys got to understand in the bible times you don't have anything like nigeria you don't hear about um Cameroon and, and, and Ghana and these different countries because they're they're more contemporary countries. They're newer countries, right? In antiquity, you didn't have these countries. These countries were formed today from migrations of people from various regions and settling that part of the continent, right? So you can see that in my gen match, right? So what do we see? We see EL forty five or EZ sixteen o fifty two which is E1B1A. We see, um, now on my JED match, we see Moroccan Jews, Moroccan Jews. Now we already know, oh, I didn't mean to drag that like that. Now we already know that based on my DNA, that um, my paternal haplogroup group goes back to the Yoruba people. So I'm E1B1A, I'm Yoruba, most Yoruba people are E1B1A, like 93% of them. So now let's go to my true ancestry. This is it already kind of clicked. <laughs> I'm I'm level four. Um, but um, basically, if you click analysis summary, it'll kind of show you um, an overview of who you are based on your paternal haplogroup. Mine comes up as Yoruba and Al Andalus, right? So if you if you look at mine, uh, it shows Yoruba plus Al Andalus. Now, if you click Al Andalus, it just shows you that was the, that's Spain, basically. And it's specifically what Spain was referred to as in the Arabic tongue during the period of the Moors. Now, this is like um, 8th century of the Common Era or A.D., right? When the black people or the Moors, North African Berber, Amazigh people, ruled the earth for about a thousand years or so, or about 800 or so years, right? So basically, 
um, a Yoruba Moor that my DNA matches with the people of Spain during that time period. Now, what did, where does this sound like we've heard this before? Now, let's go back to the Yoruba or tradition. Iberian Jews of Yoruba nationality. The Bani Ephraim from Nigeria live among the Yoruba nationalities. Their oral history tells that the Bani Ephraim people came from Morocco, which we saw a lot of that in my Jed match. A lot of Morocco, a lot of Moroccan Jews, right? A lot of North Africa. Um, and they came from Morocco after the Jews were banished from the Iberian Peninsula. Now, this is the craftiness of Esau, or the powers that be, right? Al-Andalus is Iberia. Al-Andalus, also known as Muslim Iberia. So, wait a second. My DNA, my paternal DNA matches the Yoruba people, specifically the ones that come from Iberia, right, or Spain, and I'm a Moor, right? So, wait a second. The Yoruba or tradition must be true. That, because I have DNA to prove that I come from Spain, and, and my people migrated from Morocco to Nigeria. And that people that did that were the Banai Ephraim people. Y'all gotta understand what that means. Israelites. Ephraim is the son of Joseph, one of the twelve tribes. Right? It even says that the Benai Ephraim have a have a Torah, portions of which they keep in the sanctuary, y'all. Do y'all hear what I'm saying? This history is powerful, y'all. The DNA proves it. People lie, but the DNA doesn't. Right? It says the Benai Ephraim provide a living, irrefutable tr proof of this barely known history of mass. Jewish resettlement in West Africa. Man, between 1492 and 1692, a 200-year non-stop return of Jews to Africa. Wow. So what is that saying? That around the same period that the transatlantic started, you had Jews running from Spain and North Africa into West Africa. Why? Because King Ferdinand and Isabella Banish the Jews from that region. Does this coincide with why they knew slaves were in West Africa? Now we're going to go a little deeper than that. That's when you get into uh, the Jews and Moors of Spain. And when you get into all that history of uh, King Manuel's decree. Shout out to B'nai of Israel. That brother doing some groundbreaking research, right? All praises. Those people knew who they were going to get. Now they say in 1492, Christopher Columbus sailed the ocean, ocean blue. He knew by Moorish influence about other Moors that was in the Americas as well as in West Africa. These Europeans knew what people they were going after. They knew there were massive refugees. Some sources like Henry Gratt say up to uh, from 400 to 800,000 of these Israelites or Jews, quote unquote, were fleeing into North Africa. And when they, they had got found out, they fled deeper into check this out west africa where african americans are said to come from that's powerful y'all that's real powerful i'm trying to tell you our history can't be stopped so so basically y'all so if you're on jed match and you take like your 23 and me kit number and upload it right i got mine on here i ain't gonna show the actual kit number but um if you go to free tools go to add mixture heritage um, and I'm just going to drag it and create a new tab real quick. And when you're an ad mixture, there's a lot of different projects. Basically, projects take your DNA and some projects compare it to a certain group of people. Right. So it might not show certain results. That's why some Israelites were saying, well, Yours doesn't say Limbo, but this, but ML, MDLP shows Limbo because M MDLP is a modern project that includes that group of people. But not to go too deep on that, I'm going to pull back up Ethio Helix. Ethio Helix and Dodecad are said to be the African-American quote-unquote um, projects to use. So I'm going to pull my kit up. 
and I'm going to do Africa only. Right. So when you do it, it shows you your breakdown of your DNA, what groups in Africa um, most likely share your genetic composition. As you can see, West Africa is predominant. Most African Americans are primarily West African, right? But we've been told um, that we're confined to that region, that the West African black just showed up, right? He wasn't the Egyptians of old, even though the Yoruba DNA matches the, the Egyptians, not because we're Egyptian, but because our people have a, had a long affinity for that continent, um, going all the way back to the time of the Exodus. So, as you can see, this is just showing how much North Africa is represented in my genetic pop, uh, composition, which is spectacular. And this is a distance of four. So, this ain't a maybe. This is this is a part of my ancestry. All right. Um, and when you see Moroccan Jews and North African Jews, this is distance 10, 11, and 12, right? I've seen brothers even closer than that, like three and four, right? I was just to be expected because I, I know the European that is in my family. Uh, my grandmother had heavy European ancestry, right? So basically, we know that I'm EZ16052, which we know that's E1B1A, which I already knew from my um, African ancestry that I'm E1B1A because it matched to the Yoruba people. African ancestry is amazing, y'all. It, it takes you all the way back to a tribe in the country of Africa instead of just saying you're African American, right? So I knew, I knew I was Yoruba of Nigeria, E1B1A, as all, or 93% of Yorubas are. But this is another source talking about the Yoruba having this uh, Near East history or coming out of the uh, Middle East. And it also talks about the Benai Ephraim, who came from Morocco after the Jews were banished. And as you saw, you saw Moroccan Jews, you saw heavy Morocco in my Jed match. And then my true ancestry says that you are Yoruba, you are from Al-Andalus, which is Iberia, and you are a Moor. What our people don't understand is that there is such a link between the different black power groups, right? All praises to the Most High and honor to the noble Jew Ali, the prophet, the noble Jew Ali. He was in the 20s saying that black people are Moors. Now, I know they didn't have my true ancestry back then, but he was able to, by inspiration of the creator, say that the so-called black man is actually a Moor, right? When you, white folks don't want us to know we're Moors because Moors show irrefutable proof that black people can run this earth, right? When the Moors ruled Spain, y'all check this out, when they ruled Spain, um, they had uh, 90 or so public libraries, they had public public restrooms and, and bathing areas they had uh, uh lit uh, streets right the moors excelled in astronomy and you, the sciences and medicine and, and and were the most civilized people on earth during the time of of 7 11 all the way up to about 1492 when they were banished the europeans were taking baths once a year they didn't have but maybe they didn't even have public libraries but it's just it just shows you that when you see Moors that have the 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 fez that they wear, right? That has the tassel, right? That's where, right, watch this when we graduate high school and in college, where they get that uh the tassel that you wear when you graduate. It's not by coincidence that it's black. The Moors, the Moors mean dark. It means black, and and, uh, and you can click it, and it kind of goes in detail about um, Mauritania, which is which is West Africa. Right, and going on this this route, so all of this was Al Andalus, our, our Iberian, uh, Moorish Spain. Right, the Moors controlled all of Spain, North and West Africa, and if they would go over it, it goes all the way to Saudi Arabia, the Middle East, quote unquote. Um, but it covered Morocco, Algeria. That's where we see Morocco again. So all of this is verifiable. Algeria, Spanish cities, the Berber tribes, known as Mahri. Uh, marvel which is dark that's what the word more means dark so they knew they were black people they were indigenous north african freemen and i can do a video on the berber people the amazaic people the fremen where you get stuff like dune talking about the fremen and i love dune y'all y'all check dune out if you haven't seen it it is woke it shows you the connection between arabic people 
and African Americans in that Moorish history, right? A lot of our people were practicing Mus or um, Islam. They were practicing Muslims, right? But by ethnicity, they were Israelites. Now, this history is not really mentioned. You had some Arabs, but I can go into the the Bani Yathrib and and a lot of these uh, Arabs of Mecca and Medina. These were Israelites that Muhammad went down. That's a whole nother topic. The Nasrid dynasty of Granada. These were of Nasi or of Ephraimite origin. I mean, Israelite origin. Uh, it's a lot of history on the Moors being ethnically Israelites, but a lot of them practice Islam, right? Because of Muhammad and a lot of that. And they were Muhammad and them boys, not necessarily Muhammad, but the followers of Islam after Muhammad were oppressing Jews, right? You had them saying, you got to convert to Islam or die. So you had Israelites that converted to Islam freely. And then you had some that, did, that didn't practice Judaism because they're going to be put to death by a ski of Muhammad and these boys. So this is a lot of the persecution that led our people to migrate deeper into Africa. The so-called West African and South African sub-Saharan black person is the last remaining Ofer shorts, our, our group of, of Moorish right Israelites that fled deeper in that region. So y'all, I'm, I'm going to close the video out. I don't want to go too long. I'm going to do a little bit more on this, y'all, because it's a lot. No pun intended. <laughs> it's, a, it's a lot of information from a genetic standpoint that proves you know, the E1B1A, and, 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 and I'm with some people that I've watched a lot. I've gleaned a lot from a lot of different Israelite channels and people, and I just want to give honor to, to the work that's being done. And a lot of our Israelite brothers don't necessarily subscribe to paternal half little groups as being an end-all, be-all, but this is what I will say. We do know the connection between E1B1A with African Americans and Israelites. Does that mean that's the only half little group? Absolutely not. I think... E1B1 was a Natufian haplogroup that was found in Israel, um, EP2, um, way before the 1948ers got there. So I believe E1B1, which is E1B1A and E1B1B, um, both suggest highly Israelite influence, right? Or that they're Israel. Um, but I'm not limited to them. You got haplogroup G, you got R, a lot of these linked to this same event in West Africa. You find these these haplogroups not as dominant, but they have been linked to the Middle East. But what we do know is that majority of African-Americans, like 70 percent, are going to be this weird long EZ-16. Are they going to be a branch of E1B1A, right, which has been linked to Israel? And I can do some studies on that, and I'm going to include that in another video. But, y'all, yeah, I'm going to sign out right here, y'all. I, I hope you're loving the information. If I need to slow something down and go back through it. But, basically, E1B1A is, is heavily African-American. If you guys do your 23andMe or something like that, you're going to get this same thing. Unless you know that your grandfather, somebody was European that um, might have raped a slave and that kind of thing. And I know we like don't like to really talk about that history, but we, we need to know what, what happened, you know. And, and it helps us as a people be able to get in touch with who we are, you know, to find this information out. So, but yeah, I'm just kind of showing you guys what you're more than likely, what you're more likely to find if you did your own DNA with 23andMe. You're going to find E1B1A. And if you do... You can be assured you come from a West African people, either the Yoruba or the Igbo, right? Which we know for sure. Um, and actually, the Igbo and the Yoruba have been trying lately to be able to get granted acceptance into the land of Israel, which I find is amazing. Um, but the Most High is going to get us to that land, y'all. I believe the whole Yoruba people is that same people, but the Beni Ephraim are the people that retain the oral tradition. That's just mine. And then I, I can go into that a little bit more with Derek Lang and his research, his anthropological research into the origins of the word Yoruba being after King Yoruba or uh, Yeroboam, right? Jeroboam, right? The king, the Ephrathite king of the northern kingdom from the tribe of Ephraim. So that would explain why the Benai Ephraim of the Inquisition went back with the rest of their brethren in, in what is the Yoruba territory of Nigeria because they were the same people. And this article goes into detail. You guys can just Google Yoruba Benai Ephraim. If you're Yoruba, shout out to all my Yoruba Ephraimite family, y'all. Um, it's, it's so much information. I mean, Jewish virtu virtual library. Uh, there's so many Jewish agencies that know this. The Jewish Encyclopedia. All of them document these Nigerian groups as being Israelites. They're E1B1A. 
which most African Americans are. We are the people, y'all. And um, with that, I'm going to sign out. I'm going to do a series on this. I'm going to kind of rehash some of this stuff in future videos. Comment any questions, comments. Um, put any links to anything you guys want me to address or any videos. And y'all, just thank y'all for being a part of the journey, man. I'm still learning how to do this. And just I'm just trying to be obedient and teach all this stuff that I'm learning, man. The most high has been just beating. And you guys just stay doing what you're doing, Israel. Keep keeping those commandments in the faith of Yeshua. Keep spreading this history out to your family, your loved ones. Because if we don't do it, who will? Right? We are the people. And with that, family, I love you all with the love of the Most High. Be blessed and shalom.